You were supposed to do a thing this week, and it did not we were happen. To do a thing. Yeah, it we were supposed to go to Phoenix uh-huh. for the big nerd LARP con. Uh huh. And about 20 minutes before we were supposed to board our flight, the fucking skies opened up over Newark. That always sucks. So we got delayed. We got delayed again. Then they just grounded all flights going out of Newark. They just canceled everything. And we were like, okay, well, when's the next flight? Well, the next one we can put you on is 8.30 tomorrow night. What? Yeah. Which, like, we were going for a con, and the events we were interested in were Thursday and Saturday. So I'm like, that literally cuts out, like, 50% of what we were going to do. We'd have to go home, come back, go through security again. So we were just like, fuck it. We're just going home. And, and the worst part about having a delayed <laughs> flight is, oh, my God, their communication is always awful. Oh, yeah. They never want to let you know what's going on. Yeah. They, ne- they never want to get. We go down to baggage claim to try and get our bags back. Mm-hmm. And they're like, it's too chaotic. You got to come back tomorrow. Fair enough. You've grounded all flights. You have thousands of people. The next day we call and they're like, oh, we sent your bags to Phoenix. How did the bags get to fly, but you didn't? Right? They sent them on the first flight out. The bags went out at six o'clock the next morning. We couldn't go. Then, like, so now, like, we got told they were going to bring the bags. We got told we had to pick the bags up. So we couldn't really go anywhere. In case, because we kept getting different stories. So we're like, obviously, if we go anywhere, someone's going to show up at the door with these bags. Because that's how luck works. So we were pretty much stuck at home. Also, Princess Vespa didn't have her flat iron. I didn't have my flat iron or my, well, I shouldn't say my all my makeup. I was missing about a tenth of my makeup. <laughs> all of my skincare and my flat iron. That's like three of my fucking horcruxes. Okay. <laughs> We were not amused. Yeah. I had to go buy a toothbrush because my toothbrush was in there. So on the way home from the airport, I'm like, I got to go buy a toothbrush. They lied to Dan and told him that our, pla- our bags were back in Newark. And then he-, he called back later and they're like, oh, no, they're still in Phoenix. Because it took them three days to send our bags back. It was, it sucked. How often do I yell at people who work in not very. customer service? And did I yell? Yes. <laughs> There was there was shouting and throwing things, and uh, so once we were finally able to go somewhere yesterday, we went and pet all the cats at the shelter. See, you're you're making me worried because I'm I'm flying out on Thursday. It was the weather that did it to yeah. us. Like they were fucking apocalyptic lightning storms. Like we were watching lightning hit really perilously close to planes. We're like shit. Well, and we had a friend of ours who was stuck on her plane. She flew out of Queens and her plane was supposed to take off at 8 p.m. And she sat on that plane until 4 a.m. when they finally took off. They gave them the option to deplane as wanted because I was like, did they even feed you? She's like, no. But there was a Shake Shack open in the terminal till 1 a.m. and they would let us get on and off the plane. So, like, you could get food. But, yeah, 8 p.m. And it was, it's a five-hour flight. Wait, they were actually going to... They, oh, we'll totally take off at 4 a.m. Bullshit. They did, though. They just didn't tell them anything. But they were like, the flight's not canceled, but we can't tell you any more than that. You can get off if you want. And our friend was like, I'm not getting off this fucking plane. Why would they do? Why would they do that? Why can't they? T- oh my God! Nobody at the fucking airport knows how to say it. It sucked. See, now you're tripping me out because I got to get on a plane Thursday, and I'm like, great. This, I, everything I hate about flying. But on your side, you're okay because we have apocalyptic thunderstorms again today, and a bunch of our friends that are flying home from the con had a really tough time getting home. They're supposed so to be. The, as long as the weather's on your side. Well, apparently, well, the, the apparently the tropical the depression is going to pass by on Wednesday, so it'll be done by hopefully it'll be done by the time I get on the plane. Well, then that hit us today. Yeah, um, then today, like the apocalypse hit. Oh no 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 no! This is a different one. Yeah. Well, you know, 
climate change. Yeah. Brooklyn's like under four feet of water right now. It's a fucking mess out there. Did I hear Simba? No, that was Peggy. Bye, yeah. Peggy. So that was our week. We sat around being pissed off. And really big, interesting things happened at the con that we would have liked to be there for, but we missed them. Oh, well. So I went to, I took him to pet cats yesterday because he'd spent four days being angry. So I was like, let's go pet some, some cats and you'll feel better. And the air conditioning's broken at the cat shelter. So all the cats at the shelter are like... <laughs> Only half of the building is broken, so they have all the doors open and fans running and baby gates up and like, but all the cats are just like, I'm out <laughs> All right. Well, it is time to get to the news. Let us get to the news. Intro, please. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You. And this week, crazy. we're from, from the uh, Department of Serendipity. Crazy there, there are moments so doing all these crazy news stories. I forgot to just give you a shout out. Why did I do that? And it's just blue now. Stup stupid me. There are moments. I'm bad, stupid bad. There are moments doing all of these ridiculous stories where the stars align. And things happen in such a way that it's just like, someone messing with us? Is there a bit of glitch in the Matrix? And that's, that's what this one feels like. Is this another rattlesnake uranium whiskey situation? No, no this, is, this is Florida. Oh, um, yes! Five this guys us from oh. the universe. <laughs> five guys arrested for fighting at five guys. As advertised. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it's it does what it says on the tin, I guess. Stewart, Florida, five guys were at an appropriately named restaurant when they got into a brawl. According to Stewart Police, uh, officers received a report of a fist fight taking place inside of a Five Guys burger restaurant. When officers arrived, they ended up taking five people into custody. Police arrested three juvenile males and two adult males and charged them for fighting. The cause of the fight is currently unknown. You know what? I, I, I wish... I, I would, I would love to say that this wasn't the case, but I bet one of them went, hey, there's five of us. Yo, we're five guys in a five guys. Let someone get out your camera. This is YouTube shit. I like to think the universe went, Nash and Tara need this. <laughs> <laughs> this. This just... What the hell? And that's a shame because they have really good burgers. They do. They, 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 you know, not the best burger I've ever had, but as far as takeout burgers go, this is good burgers. They have really good fries. Uh, they give you all of them. They give you all. They, I don't even know why they have sizes. I know. They're just like half the bag is, is French fries. Like whether you order a small or a large, you just get a quart of fries yeah. it doesn't matter what size you order you just get fries for days so i just order a small because i'm gonna get the same amount of fries and i'm gonna pay a dollar less i well, who would start man i have you been in a five guys of course you've been in five you just talk about it. Of just being in a five it's this is not like a place that instills a sense of violence must happen no, I mean, everything's red. Well, it's, it's checker pad. It, it looks like an old diner kind of but thing. But it all smells like grease. And there's big bags of potatoes everywhere. And, like, drawings that kids did on the walls. It's a pretty friendly environment. I mean, look, you could get in a fight, sure. Or you could go play with the Coke machine that has, like, and a billion and 12 right. flavors. You could go get yourself a lime vanilla orange cherry coke that sounds like an old-fashioned but not 
Like you could get yourself a fruit punch Coke if you wanted. Yeah, I mean, I I would be like, you know, I could punch you in the face, or you just play with these buttons for like an hour. Yeah, or I could eat all of these French fries and just go into a carb coma. I'm like, I'm, I'm one of those adults who's like, when I was a, we didn't have this when we were a kid. We just had the fountain and just the buttons. Now I'm an adult, and this thing is here, and I'm not like, I'm not like, oh, this newfangled thing. I'm like, I love this thing. Boop 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 boop, and kids are behind me like. What the hell's wrong with you? Just get a fucking soda. Boop, 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 boop. My movie theater special is two thirds cherry vanilla Coke, one third regular Coke. So you get the flavor, but not like the cloying sweetness. Uh, <sighs> yeah, I, I, who can, who is fighting in a Five Guys? It's too good to fight in a Five Guys. The food. No, too- and you're too full by the end. Right? I mean, I'm old. Man, I could see somebody fighting in like, you know. A Burger King, yeah. Yeah. A McDonald's, a Wendy's. The food's not great. It's like, here is something that could be considered food, <laughs> but it's cheap. So, you know, okay, sure. Stuff from uh, Good Omens called Meals. <laughs> they have to play the little disclaimer. It is not technically food. <laughs> yeah. Vanilla Sprite, oh. No, but Five Guys, That's that is that is a good place... They have several brawls at Chuck E. Cheese. Have you yeah. had the pizza at Chuck E. Cheese? Right. It's awful. And you're screaming children and loud games. No, five, five guys just big sacks of potatoes and delicious greasy food. Right. You know. The only the only complaint I've really heard about Five Guys is they fry their fries in peanut oil. Yeah. So like nut my allergies. nephew has a nut allergy, yeah. so he can't eat there. And that is a bummer. But it, who could who would, why fight in the five of all the plate? Grady, what are you doing? Can you see him back there? Yeah. Grady, are you knocking? Do not knock those over. Oh, I'm going to knock this over. Do not. <laughs> oh, you best believe Grady, I'm going to knock Grady, do, do not. I'm going to do I'm, it. I'm watching. Do, that is no. I'm going to do it. You got any treats? What's the worst to you? Grady? Grady, I know you know your name. Ooh. You know your net Grady. I can't hear the human. <laughs> he knows his name when he wants to know his name. They'll do. Oh, he's forgotten about knocking stuff over and now he's licking his butt. Well, that's important. That butt's not gonna lick itself. Nope, now he's back. Grady. <laughs> oh, 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 there it goes. It's going. Gra- oh, now Grady. we're gonna chew on it. <laughs> you little shit. Well, hi. Hi, Grady. what? Get out from there. No. Grady. No. Grady. You put this nice soft blanket up here. What do you want from me? Look Get at him. Down. Like, what? Get no. down. No comprende? Shit. Um, I-, I have an idea. I have an idea. There you go. Piece of paper. Problem oh, solved. Like paper? Dottie used to love crumpled paper. Uh, Little trash panda. Let's Dottie's been being somewhat nice to Simba. She's coming around. Like, they're not like besties, but she doesn't have to growl at him just because she sees him anymore. And we've caught them playing a couple of times, but then as soon as she realizes we see her, she goes... Well, the, hier- the hierarchy has been established. Yeah. All right. Well, let let let's move on now to. Uh, oh God, damn it! I it's more Florida, obviously. Um, was this Dis- yeah Disney World? That's Florida. God damn it! Happiest place on earth, my ass. Disney World tourist didn't have a fast pass to Tower of Terror. So she punched an employee and started pressing buttons. That's not safe. Chicago tourist, who was angry she didn't have a fast pass to Tower of Terror, ended up punching a Disney World cast member in the face and began pushing buttons, which the employee warned could have affected the ride. The 23-year-old woman wasn't charged. The Disney worker didn't want to press charges. That's so gracious, you should have. 
The attack began in the evening of July 13th when the Chicago woman and her group were upset their fast passes weren't valid for the popular ride at Tower of Terror. Uh, the incident did not happen in the elevator shaft portion of the ride, but in the pre-show area where visitors were ushered into the creepy library to watch the Twilight Zone host Rod Sterling's introduction. A 23-year-old Disney worker offered to help them with the fast passes, but the group only became more angry. On our podium phone, the worker called for a supervisor to request security. That's when the Chicago woman began pushing buttons on her ride podium. What's that going to do for you? What is that going to accomplish? There's no get me on the ride button. No. Just, just... I understand that you're more important than everybody else. Ugh. And that it's absolutely urgent that you get on this recreational ride immediately. But shut the fuck up. The Disney worker asked the Chicago woman to stop, and when she was ignored, she pushed the tourist's hand away from the buttons. She got punched in the face. The scene kept escalating. This is, this is the bit that made me like, what the hell? The family continued to yell profanities and record her with their phones. So you recorded yourself being an asshole? Right! I'm like, who is, are you really thinking this is going to make you look better? That, that's what they like to call Exhibit A. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I, it's why the just, just put. I have a relative. I won't specify which one who is explaining to another relative recently at a family party how to like game the system at Disney World. That like, if you don't have a fast pass for a ride, tell one of the kids to limp and pretend they're disabled. Or, you know, if you don't make reservations for dinner, just pick your restaurant and go in and say you have a reservation. And when they don't have it, just throw a fit and start yelling and then they'll find you a table. And I'm sitting there the whole time and I'm like, do you know how much they hate you there? They hate you. They hate but, you a lot. Way, I hate this person too. So if somebody asks, I'll probably give the name. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, th this one of their children is old enough to watch. But I said, I like, I said, to them, I'm like, you know, everybody there hates you, and you know, you've consumed spit. <laughs> as long as you're comfortable with that, I mean, you do you, I guess. But that's a dick move. Now, this is something I didn't even know they did. Disney has issued a lifetime ban on the Chicago woman. Damn. Mickey Mouse done kicked your ass to the curb. I didn't know they did that either. I didn't know you could get banned for life from Disney from World. Disney. <laughs> Mickey's like, get the fuck out. <laughs> I think technically that's a job they would give to Donald Duck. He's the grumpy one. <laughs> yes. He's, I I don't... What the fuck? Would, mm, I mean, Jesus! Awesome. And that's, like, this Fast Pass stuff? Like, we... I haven't been to Disney in a long time. We went to Universal Studios. We uh -huh. went to Florida, because I wanted to go to the Harry Potter world, which is really cool. But, like, lines are part of it. It's just how it is. Like, that's fucking life, but... Everybody now is so fucking entitled and everybody's so much more important than everybody else that God forbid I wait in a line with everybody else. Like, I, I know your kids are screaming. That happens. It's it's part of it. You got a deal. I mean, if you, if you don't want to wait, go make your own Disney World. Yeah. You know? I mean, part of what helped us is we made the mistake of going to Orlando in September. Uh -huh. And we weren't dry the whole week. So, like, there weren't that many lines because we were the dumbasses that went to Orlando in September. <sighs> oh, oh, God. motherfucker. Just everyone, this, every story this week is just like, come on. Come, come on. Speaking of entitled. I don't know, that Five Guys one was a feel-good one. <laughs> 
From Atlanta, woman arrested after social media posts threatening to blow up Clayton County courtroom. Yeah, they don't like that. They do not like that. Woman is in jail facing felony charges after Clayton County authorities say she sneaked a firecracker into a courtroom and threatened to blow the place up. Whitney they don't Jeffrey. like that either. Whitney Jeffries, 32, was arrested Monday night after a judge saw the threat the woman allegedly posted on social media. Judge Michael Garrett said Jeffries was on the front row of his courtroom. He told Channel 2 she seemed agitated that it was taking so long for her case to be called. You know where you really don't get to act entitled? In fucking court. <laughs> Later, he saw a video she posted on her social media page where she held up a firecracker and said she was going to blow the courtroom apart. It is not clear how Jeffrey's got the firecracker into the courtroom. Not a pocket. I got a couple of guesses. Yeah. Um, deputies might, went. Might not light because it might be damp. <laughs> Jeffries went to uh, deputies went to Jeffrey's condo in Morrow to arrest her. Nobody answered when agents first knocked. Um, according to the pizza station, according to the news station, however, deputies realized someone was inside when a pizza was delivered to the house later that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the cops come to the door, you, you do the no one's home. And then you don't check to see if they're gone before you order a fucking pizza. You ordered a pizza. <laughs> We are not we are not working here with with, with some criminal masterminds is what no. we're saying. <laughs> no. Oh. Jeffries was booked into the Clayton jail where she remains held on a $35,000 bond. She faces three charges including making terroristic threats and possession possession of a destructive device. You go in jail, lady. Yeah. That's the thing, like, even if you don't have a firecracker, you're not allowed to say things like, I am going to blow up the building. No. That's that's one of those little infringements upon our First Amendment rights. You're not allowed to do that. No. You're not Melvin from Office Space. Mm -mm. That That's not how that works. And I don't know how blowing up the building was going to get your case seen any faster. Or threatening to. Anyway, what were they going to Oh, no, this lady's going to blow up the building. Let's we move better... her to the top of the docket. Yeah. No, what the... They can literally lock you up there. They're equipped to lock you <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. It's one-stop shopping. Right. Like, they can just not let you go home. You don't get to fuck with them. <laughs> Ordering the pizza. <laughs> That's what kills me. They're waiting outside for someone to come home, and then they... You do realize the cops were knocking on your door. You idiot. <laughs> like, did you even look out the window? You fucking idiot. Oh. Oh, okay. Didn't even get to eat her pizza. Next one is, um... I don't even... What is... I don't... I, I have done, all right, I, you've been a kid, you've been in mischief, you've done stuff. I have done the, that's not mine, when I've gotten in trouble, when it clearly uh, is mine. Yeah. That's not mine. I don't know where that came from. I didn't do it. That's not mine. I've done that. I, everyone has done that. This, however. I, I wasn't allowed to buy candy off the ice cream truck. I was only allowed to buy ice cream off the ice cream truck. I don't know why that was a rule. But, um. So if my mom caught me with candy, oh, that's Jessica's. That's not mine. I didn't buy candy. I already ate my ice cream. <sighs> this the, the audacity of this motherfucker. Man in police custody says cocaine under his nose isn't his. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, honey. Were you just inhaling it for a friend? <laughs> <laughs> I was just holding it for my friend. Up, up my, my nose. Florida police pulled over a vehicle last week around 4.30 a.m. Sunday morning 
An officer with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office noticed a white substance located under passenger, and I love this guy's name, Fabricio Jimenez nose. Fabricio Jimenez. That is a wonderful name. That is a cool name. That is a, you are not going home alone from the bar that night. That is, I am Fabricio Jimenez. Hey, Fabricio Jimenez, how are you doing this evening? Fabrizio, I, I went to high school with a couple guys named Fabrizio. That is a cool name because you shorten it to Fab. Yeah. Like, that's cool no matter how you play it. The officer immediately recognized the substance as cocaine. He met his nose, was swabbed, and the test indeed came back positive for cocaine. While being arrested, however, Jimenez tried to plead with officers that the cocaine located under his nose was not his. Yeah. How? Hey. Mm. Oh, they have a picture of his nose. They do. They do. His glasses aren't properly fitted. <laughs> well, he's high as fuck. No, like they're not. They're too far down on his nose. His eyes aren't centered in the lens. I used to work at Lens Crafters. That his optician did him wrong. I. How? Okay. All right. How is your friend gonna get the cocaine back? Were they gonna lick it off your nose? Cause that's gross. This is what, what what the hell was gonna happen? Was they gonna go up there with like you know one of those plumber snakes or something? Be like, hold on, I'll get it back. How do you pull the that's not? Oh my god! <laughs> the, the, the audacity of this motherfucker! <laughs> is the cocaine in your bloodstream not yours either? <laughs> No, I'm just holding that for a dude, man. He'll get it back later. A search of the vehicle also yielded a backpack that contained 250 grams of marijuana and 13 Xanax pills. A further search of Jimenez also produced a small baggie of cocaine. That's like... So, like, cocaine's an upper. Xanax is a downer. Right, and then marijuana is just a mellower, like, you are going to be all the fuck over the place. <laughs> you are going to be your own multiverse. <laughs> That's not safe. Your heart doesn't even know what to do. I just, I don't. It's not mine. <laughs> there was a point zero 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 one percent chance that would work. Your only chance of that working would be if it was the guy from last week who was just pretending to be a cop. I mean, you know, you you, you never... Who was, what was it? Wayne Gretzky said, you always miss the shots you don't take. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he tried. Might as well at that point, I guess. Oh. What have you got to lose? Speaking of what have you got to lose, um... What the fuck is going on? Uh, from Illinois. What the fuck is going on this week? Naperville attorney pleads guilty to parachuting off Will County Courthouse. Okay. Naperville attorney pleaded guilty to criminal trespass money for parachuting off the Will County Courthouse under construction in Joylette. Uh, Adam Wirtz, 36, of North Aurora, was arrested in February by Joylet Police after a late-night parachute off the 10-story, 218-foot-tall courthouse under construction. Um, Wirtz parachuted off the courthouse. Wait. What? You left off a really important part of that sentence. Across the street from the Joylet Police Department. <laughs> Did you think they weren't going to notice? Wirtz parachuted off the courthouse and landed in the police department's parking lot. <laughs> you literally delivered yourself to them. <laughs> gift wrap, because when you land the parachute, yeah. fuck, you gift wrapped yourself. You know those little parachutes in the Hunger Games? <laughs> they send, like, food and medicine? That's you. When Ooh. officers ask Wirtz... Why he jumped off the building, Wirtz reportedly told him he did so because it was a courthouse and the, quote, building had value. Do you think that if you jump off of something, that means you own it? What? I, it's, what? 
What? Okay, well, the judge had... had I, I, <laughs> <laughs> There's a thing about county judges that, that you have to understand. Um, th there was a... Uh, um, Serial, the podcast, you should check it out. They did they did a year in like a Cincinnati courtroom. The thing about judges is they can get away with a whole fuck bunch in their court. They can do a whole lot of things. You're like, you can't do that. Oh, yes, they can. A lot of judgeships are lifetime appointments. And they can say a lot of things. And in their courtroom, they're a little tiny gods. Will County Judge Corey Lund said... When I first read about this in the paper, I thought to myself, this has to be the stupidest person I've ever met. That's in the record. That is... Could and you, I gotta find your case. Could the court reporter read that back? <laughs> the stupidest person I've ever met. Um, he was a paralegal. That wasn't me. That was Otaku Boy. But I respect it. You're a lawyer. <clears throat> you know that you you know what things are illegal, presumably. That's your whole job. Well, you're not very good at it. No. Um, you're not going to be a lawyer anymore, I don't think. Well, it didn't say he got disbarred. No, 12 months probation, $600 fine, and 10 days in the county jail. Now, now, th this is the best part. It's the very end of the uh, the article. Five area attorneys, including one from the firm where Wirtz works, wrote letters of support for Wirtz, pointing to his volunteer work as an attorney, love for sports, such as parachuting, and his clean record. Hold up. Wait a minute. That's what got him in trouble. What? Terry, you look like you smelled something awful. Also, fuck you guys. What? No, come on. He's a good guy. <laughs> that That's what happens in sentencing recommendations all the time. You got to get somebody to come in there and say, yo, he's a good dude. No, he's a good dude. Yeah. But he's a good dude who's dumb. There's no law against that, sadly. This dude passed the bar exam. <laughs> <laughs> How do you pass the bar exam and you're still that fucking stupid? Uh, yeah. Says my husband with a PhD. I know some lawyers. Okay. I thought that was a bit of self-commentary. Well, once you there. pass the bar, you never pass another one. <laughs> That's an actual <laughs> saying about lawyers. I mean... Just be lawyers, you don't necessarily have to be smart to be a lawyer. You just have to have a lot of uh, knowledge retention. Hmm. You just and have I to, guess be, to find things. You have to turn your brain into a hard drive. You don't have to be smart to do that. Oh, one last one this week from Florida. Good God almighty, son. What What were you... Th oh my... What the fuck were you thinking? I lived there. This, I lived in this place. Newport Ritchie, Florida. Naked Florida man wearing bra burglarizes several cars. What? He wasn't naked if he was wearing a bra. Duh. <laughs> a naked Florida man wearing nothing but a woman's bra was caught on camera over the weekend burglarizing several cars in a Newport Ritchie parking lot. Pasco Sheriff's Office say the naked man was seen entering the fence parking lot at U.S. Water Services Corporation on Sunday. Uh, deputies say the man then proceeded to commit several audio, uh, auto, audio, auto burglaries to company vehicles. He then left the area. Investigators have not yet been able to identify the man. The Sheriff's Office released surveillance images of him on Thursday in the hopes that someone recognizes him. Anyone who can call it, who can identify him or has any information on the case, call 1 800 706 2488. Is there video? He's not out that bra, though. There's video. Hold on. Yeah. There we he's, go. Um, he's, I don't know why he's walking like a little zombie. Like, I, I just. 
Why the bra, but no underwear? <laughs> Why? Well, clearly you've never had boobs. He's also got a hat on. And shoes. He's not naked. He just, he's missing the, the pertinent. He's just, he's just pantless. Well, he's missing the most pertinent stuff, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, if, if you're going out into the world, your genitals must be girded. Just, Does it I, have to be pants? And I'm, I'm not even for the sake of propriety, just for the sake of that's something you don't want knocking into shit. Or you don't want shit knocking into them. I don't care. The world is really unsanitary. I don't care which set you got, okay? You don't want stuff banging into your genitals. You don't want your genitals banging into stuff. You don't want your genitals rubbing on anything out in public. Good God, no. There's a reason we call them privates. Do you know what people do in their own cars? Watch this show. (laughs) You're just going to get into somebody's car with your all together hanging out? That's not safe. You're definitely going to get some kind of infection. So just let's, let's, okay. You're going out to commit crimes, right? You're going to steal stuff from cars, right? Your, your You're going to need pockets. What? You're going to need pockets. Yes, you're going to need pockets. Bras don't count. I mean, you can fit a few things in there, but come on, that's not a really good pocket. It's going to yeah. fall out of there. Um, yeah, they're not actually, like all those movies where chicks have, st- it doesn't stay. doesn't stay. Trust me, I've tried it. Unless you have like ample cleavage that'll hold stuff, it's not that effective. So yeah, it, it's he's oh, that's that's a good point. The Bob says smashing windows and naked. Those don't mix. No, those don't mix at all. That's not safe. Um. Also, you've covered everything that did not need to be covered, including. Well, you have not covered the, your face, which. Yeah. I mean, they haven't identified him yet. That might just be because he doesn't have very many friends. (laughs) Let's be honest here. If you're the kind of dude who's leaving your house in in a a, a flip-flops, a bra, and a baseball cap, and nothing else, I don't think you're getting invited to a lot of parties, or at least not ones where um, good things happen. Yeah, (laughs) No one's looking at you and going, oh, he'll do. Send him an RSVP. I mean, maybe he was practicing for puppetry of penis. I bet those guys get invited to parties. I just... But there is their job, and they do in a controlled environment. Not just, like, out on the strip. And I love, he's also walking very casually. He's not, like, in a hurry to go anywhere. It's just like... And there's a point where he's, like, hunched over for some reason. That is creepy. Like, well, time to do crime. I just, like... Maybe put on some pants before we do any crime today. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, so what did we learn this week? Um, the first thing is... Dress for the job you want, not the job you have. Just dress. <laughs> just, just dress in general. Because I don't think he was dressing for any job at all. Except maybe like glory hole inspector. Ew. <laughs> We've learned that uh, YOLO has consequences. Yes. Yes, it does. Also, don't gift wrap yourself for the cops. Make them work for their shit. I mean, if you're going to deliver yourself, it is nice to at least put a little bow around your neck or something. That's just courteous. We've learned that, you know what? Sometimes you just got to go for it, even if you have no chance of succeeding. (laughs) When there's nothing left to lose, fuck it. Yep. (laughs) It could have worked. There was a tiny little chance he could have gotten away with that. Um, We've learned that nothing in life is improved 
with a bomb threat. Nothing. Yeah. You mm -hmm. just made everything much more difficult for everyone. Um, we've learned it is a small world after all, and you're not welcome there anymore. No. It's too small for you. <laughs> and finally, sometime, we've learned that sometimes the planets align... And, a and moment, wonderful things happen. It is, it's kind of a glorious moment. It really is. That suddenly, Sometimes Matrix ain't so bad. Suddenly, five guys fighting into five guys. <laughs> that's that's just that's, that's it's just, beautiful, man. That's just beautiful. It, it just is, warms it, my it, heart. Now That's I'm the kind of pure content we need in this dark and messy world. Now I just want to go to Five Guys and play with a soda machine. 